So we're going to, um, so again, our test is not going to be until next week, Friday. I'm going to be here for the last few minutes. I don't know if I'm going to be here. What's your plans? Uh, oh. My sister. What's your plan? I'm going to be Okay, well, we're not holding up the test for you either way, so. All right. Okay, guys, so our test is not for a while because of the fact that we have the ACT coming up um, on Tuesday. That's when our test should be. Um, but I can't, you know, take you out of the ACT to take a geometry test. So there's rules about that. Um, so um, just to remind you guys um, with our different types of angles and arcs and different things here. So um, one of the things in this problem, making sure that, especially on the test, if I'm asking you for an angle, you're looking for an angle. Like, I mean, so angle, there's angles, there's arcs, there's segments, there's all different parts of these. So we want to be careful about this. Now, a central angle, the vertex is at the center of the circle. So if I have angle two here, it's going to equal the same as that arc. So angle two is going to equal the same as the value of x. So they're equal in that case. But also realizing that these three angles should add up to 360 as well. So the angle will equal the arc. So the arc that's across from it equals that angle. But this is only if the vertex is at the center of the circle. We're going to talk about other ones, or we've talked about other ones, where the vertex is not at the center, and that changes like the rules that go with this. Right? So our next one is basically telling us if we have chords and arcs, if the chords are equal, the arcs are going to be equal. The chords are equal, the arcs are equal. So what I'm saying is that FG equals JL or JH. If I have one that actually exists. And I'm using like this double arrow here to show that it works both ways. Then that means the arcs are also going to be equal. He's stealing stuff. Markers. It's usually what he comes in for. Oh. So if these chords are equal, the arcs are going to be equal. Okay, this one has a lot of different things going on in the next drawing here. So the diameter and the chord are perpendicular. So in this case, AB is perpendicular to XY. We can see that because we have um, that right angle shown. And AB is our diameter. In drawings like this, there's a whole bunch of things that we know are equal. So we know that 
these two little chunks are going to be equal, so xz, these two little segments, equals vy. But the arcs are also going to be equal. But this is also the type of problem, or if you guys recall, this is one where we drew in a radius. So if it's helpful, you may need to draw in a radius. And when that happens, typically we can use Pythagorean theorem. And I'll draw a radius in where it would be helpful. So if I drew in like CY, if you guys recall, we did that and it made a little right triangle there, which allowed us to find maybe one of those pieces that we were missing. And if they're gonna usually tell you something about the radius that might be helpful. So this is something that like, would be useful to be aware of that you may need to draw that in. Okay? Yeah, a lot of vocabulary today. Get through the front side and take a break. All right, so our next one is our inscribed angle. This time the vertex is on the circle. So rather than the vertex being in the center, this one, the vertex is on the edge of the circle. Now this time, angle one is gonna be half of that arc. Or the arc is gonna be double the angle. precise about it's an arc versus like a segment or something like that so using a little curve the arc is that outside piece all right So then we also have inscribed quadrilateral. That's where the ver vertices are on the circle. Yeah. Now in this case, the angles across from each other are what we call supplementary. They're going to add to 180. Now, all of them two together do add to 360, but the opposite ones are supplementary. The angles across from each other would equal 180. And that's for an inscribed quadrilateral while all the vertices are right on the circle. All right, two more and then we'll take a break. Our next one are inscribed angles. So these are two um, inscribed angles, sorry. Um, these two angles, they intersect the same arc. So the angles. So if you look, these are both, both B and C are touching in arc AD. So they're going to be equal.
Now they're also both going to be half of that arc. Now, if you're looking at the drawing, actually A and D are also going to be equal to each other because they're intersecting the arc on the other side. But just to kind of focus just on one side, I'm going to just mention this one. Um, but they're both going to be half of that arc. And then our last one before we take a break here um, is our inscribed triangle. And it also the diameter is the side. So again, the vertices are all on the circle, but there's also a diameter. So FH is our diameter there. That means it has to be a right triangle. So since this is the diameter, the angle across from it is going to be a right angle because the diameter makes up 180 degrees of our circle. So that means that angle across from it would have to be 90. Okay. Oh, that means.